Okay, now for less than one by three. See, since the ROC is inside the circle with radius one by three. Now, in the previous case, the region of convergence was outside the outside the circle with radius one. Here it is inside the circle with radius. If it is inside the circle, I have told you the uh, time domain should contain the negative time sequences. Okay, so which negative time sequence should come with it, and which negative time sequence should come with it is what our interest is now. Okay, so to understand that, let's consider this. See here, we said when when can we have z by z minus three in the z domain? So sorry, this is one by three. I've written three here. This is one by three, mind you. This make this one by three, everybody. Okay, the pointer where I'm keeping. This is one by three. Okay, so this will be z by z minus one by three. When it is z by z minus three, uh, and when region of convergence is less than one by three. Okay, uh, what should be there in the time domain? In the time domain, there should be minus one by three to the power n u of minus n minus one. So this is which signal is this? This is positive. Sorry, this is negative time exponential. So it is the same signal here. This is one by three, mind you. Okay, this is one by three when ROC is less than three. So when ROC is less than z less than three. Okay, so in this place you need to have Minus one by three to the power n u of minus n minus one, and in this place, this is this is minus one to the power n u of minus n minus one. Since one to the power n is one, so we just don't write that. So it is minus u of minus n minus one. So in this place, we need to have minus one by three to the power n u of minus n minus one, and in this place, we have to have minus u of Minus n minus one. So seeing this, you understand, okay? Uh, note this is one by three. I'll, I'll make that correction when I'm posting you this. Okay. So how does the inverse z transform on this look like? So if you have written, check your answers. Okay. Now this minus here would become plus because there is a minus already. So along with this three by two. Okay, minus one by three to the power n u of minus n minus one is written. So minus n minus would become plus. Okay, so on the uh, for the second sequence it is minus u of minus n minus one. So that plus would become minus, and with three by two you'll have u of minus n minus one. So this is the answer. Is that okay with you, everybody? Fine. This just the thing you have to understand here is in the previous case it was outside the circle so positive time exponential here it is inside the circle so negative time sequences fine now let's see the third region of convergence the third region of convergence says z is less than one and z is greater than one by two the first region of convergence is outside the circle with uh, radius one the second ROC was inside the circle with radius. One by three. The third region of convergence is outside the circle with radius one by three, but inside the circle with radius one. So it's a ring in Z plane. It's a ring in Z plane. For what type of signals will be having a ring in Z plane? For double-sided time sequences. For double-sided, it it has both negative time sequence and positive time sequence. Now. What you should understand is, so which term should be associated with positive sequence, and which term needs to be associated with negative time sequence? So we have to decide that. So let's see here. Okay. See here. Yeah. This is the signal given. Fine. Now, one by three is there. Let's let's just read this. Since ROC is inside the circle with radius one and outside the circle with radius one by three, it is a ring in Z plane. Hence, the signal in the time domain is double-sided time sequence. Double-sided time sequence. Now, see the signal Z by one by three, okay? And it says Z greater than one by three. So this is Z by one by three, right? So for this, it is greater than one by three circle. That means for this, it is outside the circle. For this, it is inside the circle. Everybody understand that point? See the ROC very clearly. ROC said z greater than one by three, z less than one. Z greater than one by three means it's outside the circle with one by three as the radius. So that means with this, you need to associate outside the circle with 
radius 1 by z. That means for this, it is positive time sequence. For this, it is less than 1. So that means it is negative time sequence for this. That's why I see here, this uh, z by uh, z by z minus 1 by 3 is replaced by 1 by 3 to the power n. You open positive time sequence is replaced here. Similarly, if you come to the second term here, negative time sequence is uh, being given because it is less than 1 and it is greater than 1. The same ROC is split now. Z greater than 1 by 3, Z less than 1. For Z less than 1, it should be negative time sequence in time domain. For Z greater than 1 by 3, it should be positive time sequence in time domain. Everybody catch that point? Okay. Now that's why uh, the uh, associations. Let's see, with the first term it is positive time sequence. With the second term it is negative time sequence. I hope everybody understands this point. Now let's go on with the next problem. Okay, find the inverse z transform of x of z using partial fraction expansion approach. So what is from uh, how this problem is different from the previous problem? See, the denominator here is same. 3z square minus 4z plus 1. The denominator is same. Okay. In the numerator, in the previous problem, we had z plus 1. Sorry, we had z, but here we have z plus 1. And region of convergence is z greater than 1. They have not given three region of convergences for analysis. Okay. For obtaining the inverse z transform. They have given us just one. So, we will be having just one uh, uh, case of inverse z transform. Now, now, why this problem is important? You should observe this. You should observe this. The hint is we need to have a z in the denominator of left hand side. That is the hint. So from that point of view, it is important. What was happening in the previous problem? I just go past. Yeah. Whatever what is happening here? See here. There was just z in the first problem, so we could take that z easily onto the left hand side. See, we could easily take this z onto the left hand side to the denominator. But in the next problem, we have z plus 1 here. And when we have z plus 1, that z cannot be brought here. And we don't want z plus 1 to come here. We want only the z to come here. Everybody understand? And where is that helping? That is helping here. See, here? if this z is here in the denominator, that can be easily taken on to the right hand side. And that is when this would become one standard transform so that we can apply the inverse z transform. So, but here in this problem, what's happening in the next problem? It is z plus 1. I don't want z plus 1 in the denominator. So how can I have z in the denominator then is the question. How can I have z in the denominator? So this is how it's being done. What is being done here? So if you cannot bring the z up, which is already available, okay? So what you do is divide the whole equation. Divide the whole equation by z. So you have a z here on the left hand side, you have a z here on the right hand side also. And we know how to factorize this. The factors are 1 by 3 and 1. So this equation, the quadratic equation can be written as z minus 1 by 3 into z minus 1. And that is how it's been written. Get this point. Now, by partial expansion method, how can this be expressed? So this can be expressed by partial expansion method like this. How is that being done? Now there are three factors. Earlier there were two factors. Now there are three factors. So you need to have k1 by z plus k2 by z minus 1 by 3 plus k3 by z minus 1. Is it okay? Now we have to find k1, k2, k3. Okay, you need not have to do that. I'm giving you 3 minus 6 and 3. So if you substitute this k1, k2 and k3, your x of z by z would look like this. So this is how we need to get our equations. This is the form that we want our equations to be in. So they give the quadratic equations. So the, those quadratic, quadratic equations or the third order equations, whatever is the order of equations, we need to factorize that and bring them into this form. Fine. Now what is the next step? The next step is to Take this z onto the right hand side. Take this z onto the right hand side. So it looks like this. It is going to look like this. Now, what is the region of convergence? Region of convergence is z greater than 1. 
So every time before you apply inverse Z transform, you need to look into region of convergence. Without looking into region of convergence, whether it is outside the circle or inside the circle, applying inverse Z transform is not possible. Okay, not possible. Now, it very clearly says it is outside Z magnitude Z is greater than 1. What does that mean? How to read that? ROC is ROC is magnitude Z greater than 1. So, how do we need to look at it? We need to look at it at region of convergence is outside the circle with radius 1. ROC is outside the circle with radius 1. So, which sequence you would find in time domain if you apply inverse Z transform? Since it is outside the circle with radius 1, okay, the time domain signals have to be positive time exponentials. Okay, so that problem will not come here. So there is one here. What is inverse Z transform of 1? What is inverse Z transform of 1? Delta of n. Unit impulse function. Unit impulse function delta of n has Z transform 1. So if you apply inverse Z transform of 1 on 1, you'll get delta of n. So you'll have delta of n here. Okay, for that region of current, looking into region of convergence is not necessary. But yes, when we are dealing with these two terms, it becomes necessary. So, can you write the uh, positive time exponential for positive time for this, positive time sequence for this, and positive time sequence for this? When you apply uh, inverse Z transform, apply inverse Z transform for this, everybody, and see what you get. Do that fast, everybody. Therefore, the signals in time domain is positive time sequence. Okay, so what is that positive time sequence? So you can give your attendance when there are five minutes. It's ten minutes now. I'll tell you when to give your attendance after five minutes because there are some many people who are leaving the session after giving your uh, attendance. I don't want that to happen. Okay, don't leave the session. I'll give you time. When it is five minutes, I'll ask you to give uh, attendance. Then you can. Then we can stop. Fine. Now. Since you started late, well, I'll, I'll, I'll winding up early. Don't worry. Okay. So positive time sequence should be there in time domain. Fine. So it looks like this. 3 into delta of n minus 6 into 1 by 3 to the power n u of n. So it's here. It's 3 into u of n. Since it is positive time sequence, it's easy. If it is negative time sequence, you need to be little careful about that minus sign that is associated. It is minus b to the power n u of minus n minus 1. So that minus would make students to go wrong most of the times. Okay. So you'll not, if, if you are, if you're good with that negative time exponential or positive time exponential, you will be, you'll not be having any problems uh, solving this. Fine. So let's go with the next problem. That is this. This problem is uh, straightforward, not at all a problem. Okay. So this is a very straightforward problem. You have Z in the numerator anyways. Okay. Uh, we need to bring, we can bring that Z to the denominator here. Okay. And we have 2Z square minus 3Z plus 1, which is straightforward problem. And 1 and half are the roots. So you can write it as Z minus 1 and Z minus half. So this is straightforward problem. I'll not spend more time on this. So this is how it needs to be represented with Z in the denominator on left hand side. Okay. So this can be written uh, in uh, by, uh, what partial fraction expansion we call that? Yeah, by partial fraction expansion, it looks like this. More, we, we are we are used to write a by in place of k1 and k2. We, we we are used to write a and b, right? So you can you can go with a and b, not a problem. K1 and k2. I have just scanned this from the textbook. That's why whatever was there, I just continued from it. It is very time consuming process. What I'm doing on PPTs here, it's very time consuming. It's more than learning. It's it's spending time on uh, equations. Uh, writing the equations so so I'm, I'm, I'm not going to get new stuff into okay so i'm just following the equations that are there in the textbook fine uh, if you have your ganesh rao and uday kumar textbook any one textbook would certainly help you to solve these problems fine yeah 2 and minus 2 would be your k1 and k2 so and substituting that in this equation uh, we get this fine so Take that Z now in the denominator to the right hand side, come to the numerator, 
okay so this is these are standard forms what is roc telling us roc tells us this z is less than 1 by 3 that means it is within the circle with radius 1 by 3 it says 1 by 3 but 1 by 3 is not to be seen here 1 by 3 is not to be seen but one thing that you should understand is 1 by 3 is less than 1 by 2 so that means the the roc is out inside the circle with radius half and the roc is inside the circle with radius one is what we can understand by seeing this region of convergence okay so since it is less than one by three it is negative time sequence that we will find in time domain when we apply inverse that transform so when we apply inverse that transform it should be associating negative time sequences can you write that negative time sequence just write the negative time sequence for this So how should that be looking for this? It should be minus two times u of minus n minus one, minus two times u of minus n minus one for this, and plus two half power n u of n minus u of minus n minus one. Okay, so that is what I have written here. Minus two u of minus n minus one because it is negative time we have to associate because it is less than one by three, and here this will become plus because there is already a minus in the time domain so this will become plus and it will be half power and u of minus n minus one and send hmm? now we can give your attendance everybody go give your attendance pass you have 43 members give 43 uh, attendances there Okay, and uh, regarding the internals, uh, uh, the internals that I'm conducting on Sunday, okay, a, a, a percentage of that marks would also be considered for final CIE marks. Okay, so because uh, that is what is the instruction we've got from the university. One test will be conducting online, okay, before the lockdown, lock, lockdown is over and after the lockdown is over in the uh, in the class in, in the class in the college will be connecting another internal that is how the plans are let's see how that works out okay but uh, as of now uh, let's not bother let's just uh, prepare fine see the next problem now next problem is this okay uh, thankfully there is a z here which can be brought to the left hand side here okay we will we'll go till this uh, time is over Okay, and soon after uh, the session is over, you can go and join uh, uh, the other uh, session. Uh, sorry, I started late uh, today. Five minutes late. Uh, fine, but that five minutes would, ex uh, would extend on the other side. Is that so? It, it, it starts at 45? Uh, I hope, I hope, yes. Okay, no problem then. I'll, I'll, I'll leave the session. I'll leave the session. I'll end the session. Okay, you can go on with uh, the uh, uh, other uh, session. Okay, which is starting at 10.45, fine. Fine, then I'll end. Uh, remember, we have tests on uh, Sunday. I'll, I'll let you know about the uh, timing, fine. Any, anything that you have to say, you can, you can uh, uh, post with your questions, okay? Or uh, let's see what needs to be done, fine. Uh, post your questions if you have anything to be asked, okay? Bye then.